the wife who was almost forced to become a leper at the beginning. Punch the leprosy and slap the best. A disheveled encounter, Pei Jin Rua lived a life of being favored by the group. As for the one who killed the malicious righteous sister. If a beating doesn't work, then take away everything she enjoys now and leave her with nothing. As for the elegant young man who followed behind to guard her, he might just be from the village. Keywords of the novel After escaping marriage, she became wealthy in ancient farming and entrepreneurship without a pop-dot-up window. After escaping marriage, she became wealthy in ancient farming and entrepreneurship by downloading the complete text. After escaping marriage, she became wealthy in ancient farming and entrepreneurship by reading the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Escape You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Escape, Pei, If You Go to Hell The stabbing was too deep, causing Pei Fenrua to gradually lose consciousness. When she thought she was dead, something seemed to be coming from her ear. Mom, can she really be my daughter? In dot law. As long as you cook cooked rice, even if she wakes up unwilling, she can only admit it. If Pei Zirua heard this voice, he felt that the mother and son were really despicable. He even took advantage of the other person's coma to do such a dirty thing. Mother, she looks like a lady from a wealthy family. Let's do this. It's even better this way. In the future, you will be the uncle of a wealthy family, and our family's life will also get better. The old voice became very excited because of her son's words. If it weren't for this girl's identity, she wouldn't have brought her back. Her precious son is not something that any girl can match. Son, hurry up, mom, go outside and watch. The sound of footsteps leaving and the sound of closing the door made Pei Jirua feel more and more uncomfortable as she listened, as if the sound was right in her ear. Li Matsi looked at the beautiful girl lying in his bed and swallowed his saliva. He hasn't married yet in his twenties, and now he has such a beautiful daughter. In law. When he becomes the uncle of a wealthy family, he will make all the people in the village who look down on him unlucky. Wiping away the water stains from the corners of his mouth, Li Matsi walked over step by step. Pei Jinrua, who was in a coma, was now very certain that the voice was coming from beside him. She kept telling herself to wake up quickly, but the heavy eyelids made it difficult for her to open her eyes. I'm here, little beauty. Help me live well. As the voice sounded, Pei Jinrua realized that she seemed to be able to control her body. Suddenly opening his eyes, he looked at the man approaching him, dressed in dirty clothes, with messy hair and yellow teeth as if he hadn't brushed his teeth for a long time. What made Pei Fenrua even more nauseous was the very unpleasant smell emanating from him. Upon seeing Pei Zirua wake up, Li Matsi paused for a moment and then smiled lewdly, it's better to wake up. Pei Furua looked at Li Matsi, who was reaching out to him in disgust, and her disgusted gaze irritated Li Matsi. Bitch! Li Matsi raised his hand and wanted to hit Pei Junruo. Pei Jinrua sat up from the bed with his body propped up and quickly got off the bed. As Li Matsi approached her, he used all his strength to kick the person away. As Li Matsi got up and was about to take action, Pei Zirua grabbed the kettle on the table and smashed it onto Li Matsi's head. Li Matsi touched the area where he was hit, his palms were wet, and when he brought them over, he saw that there was blood in his palms. Bitch, how dare you hurt me! I'll kill you, Li Matsi said angrily. When Li Matsi rushed towards him, Pei Zirua quickly glanced around and found that the window in the room led to the back mountain. Pei Zirua quickly made a plan and threw the stool beside him at Li Matsi. Li Matsi was worried about being hit, so he quickly dodged and dared not approach. Taking advantage of this gap, Pei Jinrua quickly climbed onto the bed, kicked open the window, and jumped out. Li Matsi realized that Pei Jirua had jumped out of the window and fled, so he quickly went out to find his mother. Li Shi was startled as she watched her son run out with a head full of blood and said, What's wrong with you, son? My mother is that slut. She woke up and hit me, jumped out of the window, and ran away, Li Matsi said angrily. 
Upon hearing these words, Li Shi was furious and said, Hurry up and find your brother and your father. This slut must be brought back. Summon the family members and the Li family chase towards the back mountain. Mother, I saw that slut. Li Matsi saw Pei Jin Rua's figure from afar. In a blink of an eye, the person disappeared into the forest. Catch up and catch the person, give her a hard beating, see how she still runs, Li said fiercely. If Pei Jian could vaguely hear the voice of the Li family, she was not sure when these people would catch up. After running for a distance, the injured Pei Zirua's speed gradually slowed down, and Li Matsi and the others followed closely behind, saying, Mom is right ahead. Listening to the sound coming from behind, Pei Junrua felt a bit anxious in his heart. She beat Li Matsi like that, and if she is caught back, the Li family will definitely not let her go. Dragging his heavy body to a fork in the road, Pei Gurua's heart sank and he chose the more difficult path. Just as he had run a distance, Pei Gurua let out a scream and rolled down the mountain slope. Gu Lingye was walking home with a wild chicken and a silly roe deer when he suddenly heard a scream and frowned slightly. He looked around but didn't notice anything. Just as Gu Lingye was about to return, a pink-white figure rolled down the hillside. Pei Zirua, whose consciousness was blurry, saw a person standing in front of him, reaching out a bloody hand to grab his hem and saying, Please. Help. Me. As soon as the words fell, Pei Junrua lost consciousness. Gu Lingye frowned and looked at the girl lying in front of him. He tied the wild chicken and the silly roe deer together, bent down to pick them up and quickly descended the mountain. Mother, that slut has rolled off. What should we do now? Let's go on the other side to find her. It took me so much effort to bring her back, just to be your daughter. In law. She dares to run away, Li Shi said, gritting her teeth as she stared at Pei Furua rolling down the mountain. Mother found someone and we tied her up. With a child, I'll see how she runs, Li Matsi said fiercely from the side. I'll listen to you. The person has already rolled down the mountain and cannot be found for the time being. Li Shi and Li Matsi have no choice but to go down the mountain and make plans. At the same time, Gu Lingye carried Pei Kurua home. Sun saw Gu Lingye carrying back a girl covered in injuries and quickly walked over, saying, Son, this girl is. She rolled down the mountain slope and got injured. Mom, please change her clothes first, and I'll go find the doctor. Gu Lingye didn't have time to say much, so he carried her into his room, covered herself with a blanket and turned around to go out. Sun looked at her son who was hurriedly leaving and quickly went to find her eldest daughter. In law. Jiang heard that his uncle had saved a girl and quickly went with his mother. In law to take care of her. Just as he helped Pei Lin Rua change his clothes, Gu Lingye came in with the village doctor. The girl suffered an internal injury and rolled down the mountain slope, feeling a bit weak. As for the injuries on her body, they were just minor skin injuries, the doctor said as she looked at the Gu family after feeling her pulse. Do you want to prescribe some medicine, doctor? Jiang asked from the side. The medicine for treating internal injuries and the medicine for wiping wounds. I'll go get it with you, Gu Lingye said without saying a word. Mother, this girl can't be the daughter of any family, can she? Jiang asked softly. Anyway, let's cure the person first. During this time, she could see the pretty little girl every day. You can eat an extra bowl for every meal. Let's go out first, don't disturb her rest. I hope everyone likes it. After a while, everyone who makes a fortune can click to collect it. Xiaoya is constantly changing, whether you like it or not, I hope everyone can support me. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Rescue you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Rescue As soon as I left, I saw Gu Lingye bringing medicine back. Sun quickly took it and helped me boil the medicine. It was not until late at night that Pagan Rua woke up in a secluded state. Looking around in confusion, the pitch black room made it difficult for her to see clearly where it was. Are you awake? 
As the sound sounded, the room slowly lit up. Pei Jirua only then realized her current situation. Standing next to her is a very energetic lady, and this should be her home. Auntie, did you save me? Thank you. Pei Jirua thanked me gratefully. If it weren't for being rescued, she might have become the treasure of the Li family. My son brought you back. How are you, daughter? Do you feel okay? Sun reached out and touched Pei Linrua's forehead, worried that she might get a fever. Auntie, I'm okay. Sun sure saw that Pei Kurua was in a good mental state, and when he returned from a trip, he still held two bowls in his hand. The doctor said you need to take the medicine for a while, so you should drink it first. Sun walked to the bedside and placed the medicine on the cabinet. Sun helped Pei Jirua sit up and handed her the medicine, saying, be careful not to scald. Pei Jinrua took a bowl and took a sip of the medicine. A bowl of bitter medicine wrinkled Pei Junrua's entire face. Sun looked amused and quickly handed her the chicken soup, saying, I made it specifically for you tonight. You can drink a little to nourish your body. Thank you, madam. After drinking chicken soup, Pei Fenrua felt warm and drowsy again. Girl, please continue to rest. If you have anything to do, just call Auntie. Dot. Auntie, come up and sleep too. Okay. I don't know if it's due to the medicinal effect or some other reason, but Pei Jinrua quickly fell asleep. In his sleep, Pei Juru unconsciously murmured, Mom, don't leave me. Upon hearing these words, Sun sat on the side and lightly patted Pei Linrua's shoulder, saying, Go to sleep, my mother won't go anywhere. Upon hearing these words, Pei Genrua fell even deeper asleep. The next day, Pei Gurua woke up and Sun had already left. Pei Gurua then realized that his clothes had changed and he was wearing a clean cotton lining. She reached out and rubbed her forehead. She didn't sleep well all night last night. Dreams are all about the original body from childhood to adulthood. Thinking of the reason for the accident, Pei Gurua let out a sigh. This girl is really foolish to believe in the words of a venomous snake, and in the end, even if she died tragically, it was cheaper for her. Thinking of his younger sister in modern times, Pei Gurua had a sneer on his lips, thinking that if she died, he would receive all his wealth. How naive! She knew that her family of origin was not good, and she had already done a property notarization when she got rich. If she died unexpectedly, all her assets under her name would be donated to charity. Daughter, have you woken up? How do you feel? Are you feeling better? As Pei Lin Rua was organizing her memories from two lifetimes, the door was pushed open by someone. It was Sun Shir who had been taking care of her last night. I'm fine now, auntie, she said gratefully when she saw Sun's Pei Fong, it's okay. Your clothes were changed for you by my eldest daughter. In. Law. Here's your thing, please see if there's anything missing. Sun took out a delicate and beautiful purse from the nearby cabinet and handed it to Pei Furuo. Pei Zirua reached out and took it, opening it in front of Sun Shir. Inside was a jade pendant, a ten thousand tails of silver note, and some small amount of silver notes. Auntie, thank you and your son for saving me. You keep this money. If Pei Fen thought that they had saved him and that finding a doctor would definitely cost him money, he gave Sun Shir one hundred tails. Sun's face immediately darkened and he said, Are you burying Auntie? Auntie, I'm not. It will cost you money to hire a doctor to buy medicine for me, and I can't let you pay for it. Seeing Sun Shir angry, Pei Jin Rua quickly explained. Sun's face looked better as he said, Where did you need so much money? You keep it for yourself, and you'll have to live alone in the future. If Pei Fen sees that the Sun family does not accept it, he will take the money back and plan to find an opportunity to subsidize their family. After saying a few words, Sun went out, and Pei Zirua had the opportunity to take a look at the room. The style of this room looks like a man's room. When Sun helped her bring medicine and food in, Pei Zirua asked awkwardly, Madam, is this room? This is my youngest son's room, 
it's quiet and suitable for you to recuperate. Gu Lingye was originally unwilling to let his room out, but was mercilessly suppressed by her. Where does he live? Pei Furua asked subconsciously. He lives with his father. Dot. Pei Jin Rua suddenly felt a little sympathy for his life. Saving benefactor. From the decoration of this room, it seems that the owner of the room is a very particular person. Isn't it not good for him to live with the elderly? You can live with peace of mind, don't worry about him. Gu Lingye, who came to pick up things, reached out and rubbed the center of his eyebrows upon hearing these words. Did his mother forget that she was the biological one? Since yesterday, his mother and sister in law have been talking about how beautiful this girl is, how kind she is to this girl, and even her favorite old son has to stand aside. What's your name, daughter? How did you appear on our side? Son asked, thinking of something. My name is Pei Fenruo. I fainted on the way to find my family and was taken home by the Lee family. She wanted me to be her son's daughter. In law, but I didn't want to, so I ran away. Pei Fenruo told Son about his own situation. Upon hearing that Li Matsi and his mother and son were planning to do such a dirty thing, Sun's face turned pale with anger. Auntie, don't worry, I'll leave as soon as I'm healed. Pei Zirua was worried that the Li family would come and cause them trouble. You don't have to worry about causing trouble for us. Your uncle is the village chief, so rest assured to stay at home, said Sun calmly. She knew that Pei Jian didn't want to cause trouble for them, but his family was not a vegetarian either. Gu Lingye listened to Pei Linrua's experience outside and no longer thought about retrieving the room. Forget it, let her stay in her room for a few days. He can't compete with a sick and injured little girl as a big man, can he? After resting for two days, Pei Junrua's body improved a bit. Pei Jirua woke up in the morning and opened the door to see a few children playing in the yard. Fairy sister, you're awake. What are you playing with? Pei Furua walked over and looked at them, asking. Their smiling and noisy appearance made Pei Jinrua suddenly regret being busy with business in his past life and not being able to find someone he liked to have a lovely child. Gu Lingye came back from outside carrying something and saw Pei Jirua standing in the yard playing with his nephew and niece. Are you feeling better now? Upon hearing the sound, Pei Jirua looked up. This is probably the most beautiful person she has ever seen. Not even those modern fresh meats can compare. Thank you for saving me and causing you trouble. If it was Pei Zirua's first time seeing Gu Lingye. When he needs to change clothes and pick up things, Sun Shi will go and pick them up for him. You're welcome. In that situation, he couldn't leave the person on the mountain. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 The Lee Family Brings Here You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 The Lee Family Brings Here Gu Lingye distributed the snacks he bought to his nephews and nieces, and only after giving them some advice did he let them leave. Several children ran away with dim sum in their arms, and Pei Fanrua was amused. The Lee Family already knows that I saved a pretty girl, they should be here soon. Gu Lingye looked at Pei Guru. You don't have to worry about this, no one can bully you in my house, Gu Lingye said as he handed the fabric in his hand to Pei Guru. Pei Ginrua stared blankly at the fabric he was holding in his hand and said, This. Is this for me? You probably didn't change your clothes. I happened to be in town today and bought some fabric. He just went out to buy some meat and came back. Passing by the cloth shop, I didn't know what I was thinking. When I came to my senses, I had already paid for several colors of fabric. Sorry to return, we can only bring it back. How much is it? I'll give you the money. The Gu family has already helped her enough and can't cause any more trouble. Gu Lingye shook his head and said, Don't be polite to me. This is not a good fabric, it's not worth it. Dot. Should she say that she is truly a mother and son? Speak in the same tone. Thank you first, then. 
Pei Fenrua had already begun to consider going to the town to buy something for everyone in the Gu family if her health was better. With the fabric purchased by Gu Lingye, Pei Jian would use needles and thread to make clothes if he had nothing to do. Zhang's daughter also leaned over to look, hoping to learn some skills from her. What are you saying? That little slut was actually saved by Gu Lingye. Li Shi was furious when she found out that her daughter Dot in Dot Law, whom she had only a crush on, had been taken away by the village chief's son. Li Shi went to his eldest son Li Shan's house, but he couldn't call Li Shan and was worried that the old man would know about it. He had to take Li Matsi and the two of them to the Gu family to find Pei Lin Ruo. As soon as she arrived at Gu's doorstep, she saw Pei Jin Ruo sitting in the yard making clothes. Li walked in with a gloomy face, grabbing Pei Kurua's hand and trying to drag him out. You're from my family. How dare you hook up with other men? Let me deal with you when I go back. Pei Jin Ruo's face turned cold, and the needle in his hand fiercely pierced Li's hand. The painful Li instinctively released his hand. How dare you stab me, bitch! Li raised her hand and hit Pei Lin Rua's face. Sun heard the villagers say that Li took Li Matsi to her house and quickly returned with a vegetable basket. As soon as I came back, I saw that Li wanted to start beating Pei Jun Ruo. Angry Sun strode in, threw the vegetable basket aside, grabbed Li's hand that was about to hit Pei Lin Rua, and slapped Li's face with a backhand. Okay, Li, have bullies come to my house. Pei Zirua looked at Sun in surprise, completely unaware that Sun would immediately take action upon entering. Sun, you old man dare to hit me. I'm fighting with you, Li said and went to hit Sunday. If Pei Jian sees the situation, he quickly comes over to help, fearing that Sun sure will be bullied. If you stand on the side, see how the big lady cleans up this scoundrel. Sun fought invincible in the village, but Li, a weak chicken, was not her match at all. After a few slaps, Li's face had swollen, and her already messy hair had become even more disheveled, with blood stains on the corners of her mouth and several scratches on her neck. Looking at the achievements of the Sun family, Pei Fenrua felt that he underestimated the Sun family too much. Who could bully someone with such skills? If Auntie tells you that you encounter someone who is unreasonable and harassing, don't talk nonsense to her and directly fight. If you can't beat them up once, then beat them up again until they see you take a detour. Sun felt that Pei Gu was gentle and gentle, and if she wasn't by her side, she would definitely be bullied. Pei Jianrua quickly nodded, feeling that what Sun Shi said was a wise saying. Li saw that she was not a match for Sun, so she ran out and sat on the ground, crying, the village chief's wife is bullying someone. The appearance of this rascal and rascal made Pei Jian seem momentarily stunned. Is this the legendary act of crying, making trouble, and hanging himself? Sun sneered, and while she was playing with these methods, Li didn't know which corner she was in. Daughter, listen to me tell you. Sun leaned in Pei Qin Rua's ear and whispered something to her. Pei Jirua nodded seriously and said, Auntie, I remember. Next, let's see how Auntie can seek justice for you. Sun rubbed her hands and waited to deal with Li and her son. The villagers heard Li's cries and quickly came over to watch the excitement. Li, why did you argue with the village chief's wife? Who in Fongling village didn't know that their village chief's wife was famous for being able to fight? You can both curse and hit people. Don't think of leaving if you don't let her lose a layer of skin. Son is jealous that my son married a beautiful daughter. In. Law and took away my daughter. In. Law, Li wailed. The villagers and nearby felt incredulous upon hearing these words. At the same time, he turned his head to look at Li Matsi, who was disheveled next to him, and then looked disgusted. Someone muttered, Which girl from that family can't bear to think so much and actually marry Li Matsi? What's wrong with my son? Even if he marries a young lady from an official family, he can do it. Li Shi jumped up from the ground and rushed over, ready to fight. The other party is not empty either. She shook off Li Shi and pointed at Li Matsi, saying, Miss Official, what do you want from your son? 
Is it because your son looks ugly or because he doesn't take a shower? This messy appearance can be smelled from afar. Pei Jinrua couldn't help but laugh when he heard the villagers' words inside the house. The people in this village are also quite interesting. After everyone who watched the play arrived at Chi Sun's, he slowly walked out and said, People like your son don't even want to pay. I don't care, you return my daughter. In law to me, whispered the whispers of the people nearby, making Lee realize that she couldn't continue to entangle and staring fiercely at Sunday. Grandma, if my sister is going to hang herself, Sun's little grandson ran out of the house anxiously. Upon hearing this, the villagers quickly followed Sun into the village. As soon as I entered, I saw a beautiful girl about to hang herself. Sun ran to Pei Linruo's side and reached out to pick him up, saying, What are you doing, Ruoruo? Auntie, please let me die. I woke up in a coma at her house and eventually became her daughter. In law. As a pure and innocent girl, how can I be a good person in the future? Pei Furua cried and even pinched herself in order to be more realistic, tears streaming faster. Pei Jirua's pitiful appearance made the onlookers feel heartbroken. What's going on the villagers beside couldn't help but ask. You tell us, we'll make the decision for you. Li Shi and Li Matsi are very clear about what kind of people they have been together for so many years. Compared to the generous Li family, they are more willing to trust Sun and this beautiful little girl, after all, their character is there. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Find an opportunity to set a burlap bag you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 4 Find an opportunity to set a burlap bag, I fainted from injury and was secretly taken back by the Lee family on the road. When I was in a daze, I heard her say. She said she wanted me to be her son's daughter. In law, and even said very unpleasant things. I didn't want to, so I secretly ran away and was discovered by their family. While running, I fell off the mountain and was saved by the fifth brother. Pei Furua choked up and recounted what had happened to her. Speaking of the sad place, he reached out to wipe away his tears. I thought this matter was over and I didn't want to pursue them. Who would have thought they wouldn't let me go and ruin my reputation? Pei Jinrua said, struggling to get up from Sun's arms before going to hang himself again. Now, without Sun's intervention, the villagers nearby all rushed to grab her and said, Little girl, don't worry. With us around, does she dare to touch you? We know very well what her son is, you don't have to worry about them. Pei Jirua glanced outside and saw Li Shi's appearance, his body trembling slightly. But. But they said they would break my legs after catching me, and also. They would tie me up. I see who dares. Upon hearing this voice, Sun's lips curved slightly, and the old man finally returned. Sun lightly patted Pei Kurua's hand and looked up at Gu Dajiang as he walked in. Old man, take a look at what kind of people you're taking in. You can do such a scumbag. Gu Dajiang walked in with a cold face. He had been with Pei Kurua these days, and she was just a gentle little girl. If it falls into the hands of the Li family, will this be enough? Li Shi saw that the village chief was feeling a bit guilty and unwilling to give up like this, so she choked and said, she's talking nonsense. She voluntarily agreed to marry my son. Before Gu Dajiang could speak, Sun became angry and said, your son is just a toad who wants to eat swan meat. If our family were such a good girl, how blind would she be if she voluntarily married your son? Gu Dajiang coughed lightly and glanced at his wife to signal her not to speak. If you say someone is willing, we can ask the parties involved. Li quickly spoke up and said, no, she already agreed before and can't ask again. Li, are you feeling guilty? What's your concern? Li scolded angrily. Girl, she said you were voluntary. What do you say? Gu Dajiang ignored Li Shi and looked at Pei Zirua, asking. Pei Zirua kept shaking his head and said, Uncle, I don't want to marry someone like this. I would rather die. You scumbag, when I catch you back, you see how I'll deal with you, 
Li Matsi said in a humiliating and angry voice. Who dares to hit me? As soon as Li Matsi finished speaking, he felt like his head had been smashed and his hands were covered in blood. I called. Gu Lingye walked out of the crowd. Carrying a deer on his shoulder and holding several white-haired rabbits in his hand. Li Matsi watched as Gu Lingye walked towards him and instinctively took a step back. What do you want to do? Gu Lingye walked up to Pei Gurua and turned to look at the Li family and their mother and son. Pei Gurua stayed at my house for a day, and she was a member of my Gu family. If you dare to attack her, you will be enemies with my Gu family, he said, you. Gu Lingye, you actually stole my woman, ah. Li Matsi was interrupted before he could finish speaking. A stone hit his mouth, causing it to start bleeding at once. Gu Lingye casually shook the stone in his hand and said, What did you say just now? Who is your woman? Li Shi saw her son being wronged and quickly came over to help. Gu Lingye's eyes narrowed slightly, and just as he was about to take action, his mother had already slapped him with a big mouth. If you still want to be beaten, just keep talking. My old son is rich, and if he gets disabled, he can compensate a little bit. Sun snorted and said. If it weren't for the fact that Li's grandfather had some kind of friendship with his own old man. She must drive out these evils. Auntie, why don't I go sue the officials? Let the county magistrate preside over justice. After Sun finished speaking, Pei Guerua spoke appropriately. This. Have you had enough trouble? As Sun was about to say something, an angry voice rang out. Sun sneered and said, You came so fast. Li felt a little scared when she heard this voice. Li Matsi suddenly hid behind Li Shi. Pei Jirua walked up to Gu Lingye and whispered, Who is this person? How do you feel that they are very scared? This is Li Matsi's father. Previously, Li Matsi bullied a girl and broke her leg. After that incident, he separated Li Shan from Li Matsi and he followed his eldest son. Gu Lingye explained to Pei Furua in a low voice. Pei Juru nodded clearly and said, I see. The last time I told you something, it seems you have forgotten, said Li Matsi as he walked over and looked at Li Matsi as he spoke, he found a handy wooden stick from the Gu family's yard, and upon seeing this scene, Li Matsi felt as if he had seen his leg broken. At that time, his father was also like this now. Mom, let's hurry up and leave. I don't want to have my leg broken. Lee was also very afraid of Mr. Lee, so she grabbed her own son and ran quickly. Mr. Lee walked up to Pei Furua and said, Miss, this is my son's fault. I apologize to you here. If he comes to trouble you again in the future, you can come to me. Thank you very much, uncle. After Mr. Lee left, the others also slowly dispersed. After everyone had left, Pei Juru asked Sun in confusion, Auntie, why did you make me pretend to be pitiful? How could she still be wronged for going up for lifting, even though she could directly deal with people? Most girls sympathize with the weak. If you act too forcefully, some people in the village will definitely turn towards the Lee family and others. Sun has her own plan. After all, the Lee family has lived in this village for so many years, isn't it better than a little girl from outside? The bigger the conflict between Li and Li Matsi, the more you should show weakness. This way, the people in the village will only sympathize with you more. In the future, when they come to trouble you, the people in the village will not let them go first. Sun initially considered beating them up hard. But later on, he thought that if Pei Jian wanted to live in Fongling village, he changed his mind. Pei Zirua instantly understood what Sun meant. Sun asked her to do this, firstly to let the villagers know what Li's mother and son had done, and secondly to let everyone know that she was a lonely and helpless little girl. After a while, no one will object to her settling down in Fongling village. Auntie, thank you for considering so much for me. When her body is better and she finds an opportunity to catch Li Matsi, she will beat him hard and retaliate back. If you want to deal with Li Matsi and Li Shi, 
let your fifth brother take you to put a burlap bag on Limatsi at some time. As long as the person is not dead, you can do it, Sun waved her hand and said. Peijirua chuckled and said, Auntie, I have the same idea. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Obstruction You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Obstruction But what she wanted was to go alone, not to take Gu Lingye. Listening to Pei Lin Rua's words, Gu Lingye looked at Sun with a headache and said, Mother, just teach her how to live in the village and how to get along with people. Don't teach her how to hit people. So a gentle and gentle little girl, don't teach only how to use force to solve problems. What do you know? When dealing with people like Li, you should take action. When encountering someone like Li who is reckless and troublesome, it's better to give her a solid beating than to reason with her. The biggest reason I asked you to do this is to let old Li come out. Let him come out. Pei Furua heard Gu Lingye say that the Li family was very afraid of Mr. Li, but didn't they separate? In ancient times, if a family was separated, it would be like two families living their own lives. How could they manage so much? Since the separation, Mr. Li has been unwilling to take care of Li Matsi and his son. If he wants to get into trouble, he will make a big fuss. If you say you want to report to the government for justice, he is worried that Li Shan and his son will naturally come out to restrain them because Li Matsi is implicated. With Mr. Li present, Li Matsi and his family dare not do anything easily. When Li Matsi finds out how to use his phone, Pei Jinrua will not be someone Li Matsi can easily move. In the future, I will talk to you about the relationship in the village and handle them simply. Sun has been trying to deal with the Li family for a long time, and he really likes Pei Jinrua. Naturally, he will help her deal with the Li family together. Afterwards, he started teaching Pei Zhua how to fight, and Gu Lingye beside him felt a headache. Gu Lingye looked at Pei Gua and said helplessly, My mother, just listen to the part about interpersonal relationships. As for making you fight, don't listen. Pei Furua blinked innocently and looked at Gu Lingye, saying, But I think the lady is right. She can move her hands without saying anything. Gu Lingye turned his head to look at Sun Shur and said, Mother, please don't lead the little girl around. Auntie didn't harm me, please don't talk nonsense. Sun Shi hadn't spoken yet, and Pei Jinrua had already spoken up to protect her. Gu Lingye could tell that this little girl looked warm and gentle on her face, but her personality was actually wild. The Li family did not benefit today, so they will definitely not let you go. Be careful when going out in the future. Gu Lingye did not continue to talk about violence to solve the problem, but reminded Pei Shi to be careful when going out. I understand. When will you go to town, little brother? Can I come with you? Pei Fenrua thought about his recovery and the temporary resolution of the Li family. It was time to go to town and buy something for the Gu family. I'll go to town tomorrow. Then you take me with you, Pei Furua said, looking directly at Gu Lingye. Okay. The next morning, Gu Lingye took Pei Linrua out to the town. After walking for a long time without even arriving, Pei Furua turned to look at the people beside him and said, How long will little five brother be able to arrive? Fifteen minutes. Why is it so far? Let's buy a carriage, shall we? Pei Furua exclaimed astonishingly. Gu Lingye remained silent, but he was thinking about this matter in his heart. The little girl was so gentle and weak that he could buy a carriage. If Pei Guirua looked around the town, there were many things on the street that looked somewhat different from what he saw in TV dramas. Pei Jinrua followed Gu Lingye to sell deer antler first, and only after finishing his business did Pei Jinrua catch him and go to the cloth shop. I bought some suitable fabrics and some shoes. As for the children in school, she bought paper and pens. I bought them a lot of these things, you don't have to spend any money on them. At this point, where is there any reason why Gu Lingye still doesn't understand? She bought these things for his family. What you bought is yours, Pei Furua said without looking up. After buying it, 
I went to the silver shop again and bought some silver jewelry for all the women in my family. As for Gua's daughter, she bought a pair of beautiful pearl flowers. After shopping, Pei Gurua takes Gu Lingye to buy dim sum, sweets and various kinds of meat. The two walked ahead, and not far away, Li Matsi looked at their backs with resentment in his eyes. Everything about Pei Linrua should have been his, it was all the fault of this bastard Gu Lingye. He just saw very clearly that the person paying was Pei Jinruo. And these money should have been his. Whenever Li Matsi thinks of missing out on such a large sum of money, he feels heartbroken. After looking at their backs for a long time, Li Matsi turned around and left. He can't beat Gu Lingya alone, and I don't believe he can't beat a few more people. Li Matsi used the money in Pei Linrua's hand as bait and called on the people who usually hang out with him to block Gu Lingye and the others. When they had agreed to find Gu Lingye and the others, they had already bought a carriage and were ready to go home. Along the way, Pei Jirua was in a bad mood. She was supposed to take out the money for the carriage, but Gu Lingye took the lead. I will use more of this carriage at home, and it would be more suitable for me to buy it. You have already spent too much money today, Gu Lingye explained helplessly when he saw Pei Guerua unhappy. I. Pei Guerua was about to say that I was rich when the carriage suddenly stopped and leaned forward, hitting Gu Lingye's back. What's wrong with Brother Wu? A slut dares to seduce other men in front of me. Let me take you back and see how I can deal with you. Pei Zirua looked at Li Matsi in front of her thinking that Li Matsi could calm down for a while, but she came to trouble the next day. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and come out. Li Matsi was a bit annoyed by Pei Furua's gaze, and turned to look at the angry voice beside him. Watching the person running out with a knife and stick, Pei Jinrua suddenly understood why Li Matsi had such confidence. So I found a helper. Gu Lingye looked at them with sharp eyes and said, Get lost. Gu Lingye is left to you, destroy his face, Li Matsi said with jealousy as he looked at Gu Lingye's overly beautiful appearance. Pei Jirua was so angry that he was about to go down when he was stopped by Gu Lingye. You don't need to be here, stay well on the carriage. Gu Lingye jumped off the carriage to solve the person blocking the way. Li Matsi quietly arrived at the side of the carriage while Gu Lingye was dealing with the others. Just as he was about to climb up, he was kicked over and knocked to the ground. Pei Furua stood on the carriage with his hands crossed over his waist, looking down at Li Matsi and saying, I haven't found you yet, but you came knocking on your door. How dare you hit me, bitch! Li Matsi got up from the ground, grabbed the wooden stick next to him, and was about to hit Pei Finrua. Pei Zhanrua reached out and grabbed the wooden stick that Li Matsi had swung over. With a twist of his hand, the stick fell off Li Matsi's hand. Pei Jinrua struck Li Matsi with a stick. Ah, Li Matsi screamed out in agony. Upon hearing the sound, Gu Lingye turned his head and saw Pei Jinrua getting off the carriage and chasing Li Matsi. When Gu Lingye was distracted, a person with a knife ambushed him from behind. Pei Jinrua saw this scene with his pupils slightly shrinking and said, Be careful, little brother. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Sending Officials You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Sending Officials At the same time as Pei Jinrua reminded, he rushed over and pushed the person away with his hand. Pushing away Gu Lingye, the person who attacked him used a knife to cut through Pei Linrua's arm with the back hand. Ah! The piercing pain made Pei Gurua exhale softly. As soon as Gu Lingye stood firm and turned his head, he saw that Pei Guruwa's arm began to bleed. His gaze fell on the man holding a bloody knife in his hand, and a bloodthirsty chill flashed in Gu Lingye's eyes. As he walked over, he kicked the man away and grabbed the knife from the other person's hand with his back. Little Five, let's send them to the office. Don't dirty your hands for such people. Seeing that Gu Lingye was about to take action, Pei Furua quickly walked over and grabbed his arm, saying seriously. Upon hearing these words, Gu Lingye let out a sigh and kicked the other person a few more times. 
however, he didn't have the ability to move before stopping. Li Matsi looked at Gu Lingye's bloodthirsty appearance and was so scared that he turned around and wanted to run. Before he could run out, a knife was placed around his neck and he said, keep running. Li Matsi's legs trembled uncontrollably in fear, and he swallowed his saliva before saying, Gu Lingye, we. We are from the same village. This slut. Just. An outsider, you. Before he could finish speaking, Li Matsi felt a sharp pain in his neck and immediately panicked. Gu Lingye, what exactly do you want to do? Have I ever said she belongs to my family? Gu Lingye asked with a sharp gaze. Li Matsi felt a bit guilty. Gu Lingye was not easy to provoke. He dared to come today because Gu Lingye's father was the village chief. What he did to save the face of the village chief, Gu Lingye would never do anything to him. Let's see you off, little five brother. Pei Kurua said seriously as he covered his injured arm and looked at Gu Lingye. Gu Lingye nodded and said, Okay. Li Matsi widened his eyes and looked at Gu Lingye, Gu Lingye, dare you. Gu Lingye proved through his actions that he truly dared. When Li Matsi and his group were escorted to the entrance of the government office, they finally realized they were afraid. All of this is what Li Matsi asked us to do, it's none of our business. You can't do this to us, said the person who was called by Li Matsi anxiously. I hate Li Matsi to the extreme in my heart. Damn Li Matsi, all he said was to deal with a little girl, but he didn't say he would end up being sent to the government. That's right. Li Matsi said you took his wife and asked us to help him teach you and this girl a lesson. After the matter is resolved, he will give us money. For his own benefit, the people brought by Li Matsi identified him one after another. Li Matsi glared angrily at them and said, How could you betray me? We just want to make a little money, we don't want to go to jail. You should leave these words to the official master, Pei Zirua snorted coldly. Gu Lingye had a smile in his eyes, indicating that his worries were unnecessary. No matter how many people refused to enter, they were all kicked in by Gu Lingye. The Yaman attendant of the mansion saw them bringing a few people over, and the girl among them was actually injured. He quickly walked over and said, What's up with you? We want to sue them for blocking the way and robbing, senior official. A few people glared angrily at Pei Lin Rua and said, Who robbed me? Pei Furua looked at them innocently and said, Isn't that you? Master, don't listen to them. We didn't rob, we just wanted to teach her a lesson, argued the people called by Li Matsi. The official squinted at them and asked the people nearby to find the county magistrate. The county magistrate only found out when he asked that Li Matsi and his family wanted to force a girl, but they couldn't force her. They dared to block the way and rob, which was really bold. Everyone here plays the 20 big board, and as for Li Matsi, he plays the 30 big board, the county magistrate said coldly. Taking advantage of someone's serious injury and unconscious intention to force others, this Li Matsi is simply a jerk. It's really cheap for him to only play 30 games. Pei Fenroa looked at Li Matsi sympathetically and said, It really hurts. Li Matsi looked at Pei Kurua with crimson eyes and anger in his eyes. Bitch, I won't let you go. Pei Fenroa pretended to be afraid and hid behind Gu Lingye, carefully looking at the county magistrate. Sir, look at him threatening me in front of you. The county magistrate's face turned black upon hearing this and said, Add ten more boards and lock them for six months. Adults are wise. Wearing thousands of clothes, not flattering. This county magistrate is indeed a very good official. Li Matsi glared angrily at Pei Kuruo. This slut, don't let her find a chance. Pei Genrua ignored Li Matsi's anger and tilted his head to look at him. Not convinced. Want to cause trouble. She still thinks she hasn't been addicted to it before. Put it down, the county magistrate waved his hand and said after finishing the board. Pei Zhirua knelt on the ground and said, Lord Xia is the ruler of the people's women. The county magistrate waved his hand and said, This is what I should do. 
In the future, when encountering such situations, don't try to be too strong. Reporting to the official is more useful than trying to be too strong. Pei Zhirua nodded incessantly and said, Sir, I understand. The matter was resolved. Pei Furua and Gu Lingya left the county government office together. Just as they left, Gu Lingya looked at Pei Furua's wound and frowned, Don't be so reckless next time. He's a big man, but he's afraid of getting hurt. Does this girl know she's a girl? Just like the county magistrate said, he likes to show off. Pei Zhirua felt a bit guilty when said, I. I'm afraid you might get hurt, right? Afraid I might get hurt. What are you worried about as a big man getting hurt? You're a girl from every family. What if something happens? Pei Zhirua looked pitifully at Gu Lingya and said, Little brother, my arm hurts. Gu Lingya's mouth twitched as he looked at Pei Linrua, but she felt embarrassed to say so. Taking someone to the medical clinic to treat the wound, the doctor helped Pei Linrua treat the wound and advised him, don't touch water or lift heavy objects in the near future. Gu Lingye turned his gaze to Pei Qinrua and said, did you hear what the doctor said? Pei Karua shrunk his neck and quickly nodded, I heard you. After taking the medicine, the two of them got onto the carriage and went back together. Sun stood at the door for a long time, but did not see anyone coming back. When I was preparing to go back, a carriage appeared at the village entrance, and soon it stopped at my doorstep. Looking at Gu Lingye sitting on the carriage, Sun asked in confusion, Why do you think about buying a carriage? I'll use it in the future, so I'll buy it right away. Gu Lingye had already spoken up before Pei Jian could explain. Pei Genrua stared at Gu Lingye, little five brother really knows how to lie. Getting off the carriage, Pei Zirua went to pick up something, and before his hand touched it, he noticed that Gu Lingye had a deep gaze at her, especially her hand. At the moment of encountering Gu Lingye's gaze, Pei Furua's subordinates instinctively withdrew and looked pitifully at Gu Lingye. Go ahead, you don't need to come here. Pei Zirua really wants to tell Gu Lingye that she just suffered a slight injury and it's okay to mention less, but he dares not. Sun squinted at Gu Lingye and said, what's going on? Mom's arm is injured, please keep an eye on her at home and don't let her lift heavy objects. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Not speaking of martial virtue You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Not speaking of martial virtue Gu Lingye knew that this girl would not be obedient and obedient when he looked at Pei Zirua's defiant expression. If I go out with you, my arm will be injured. Gu Lingye, please explain to me what's going on. Sun asked with a cold face. Gu Lingye told Sun Shi about Li Matsi's efforts to stop them, we have already sent them to the official post. Li Matsi will not be able to leave without being detained for six months. Upon hearing that Li Matsi was leading the way, Sun was very angry. This Li Matsi is really a dog that can't change its way of eating shit. It's also good. If you don't have to worry during this period, when Li comes to your door, you can say that Li Matsi was sent to the government office by you. I understand. Gu Lingye never thought of letting Pei Kurua take on these responsibilities. Pei Zirua looked at Sun Shi and asked her everything, feeling extremely grateful. Auntie, you're so kind. Walking home, Auntie will bring you food. Sun Shi pulled Pei Kurua into the room, but as for Gu Lingye, she abandoned him. Gu Lingye shook his head helplessly and drove the carriage into his house before taking out the things that Pei Jinrua had bought. Why did you buy so many things? Sun frowned as she saw her son carrying big and small packages in. Even if you have money, it's not that expensive. Will you still marry a wife in the future? I didn't buy this. Pei Jinrua let out a light cough and reached out to point at herself, saying awkwardly, Auntie, this is what I bought. That's okay, little girl should like to buy things. Sun suddenly changed his appearance, completely different from the way he had just criticized Gu Lingye for spending money recklessly. Gu Lingye reached out and pointed at himself. He was spending money recklessly when he bought it, 
and Pei Jin should have bought it. Looking at Pei Fenrua's face, does being good dot looking mean being treated favorably? Why didn't he realize his mother liked people who looked good before? Xiao Wu, take Roa Roa's things into the room and don't let her carry heavy objects. Sun instructed Gu Linya to help with the work. Gu Linya shook his head helplessly, feeling that he had completely lost his status at home. Pei Fenrua thought that there were not all people at home now, so he didn't take out his things. Wait until everyone returns at noon before moving out the things. Gu Linya's brothers and sister dot in dot law are all made of some fabric, and their sister dot in dot law has two silver ornaments. Gu Dajiang likes to drink tea, and Pei Furua bought him some tea and fabric. As for Sun Shi, besides silver jewelry, she also bought a gold bracelet. The children's food is nothing but pens, ink, paper, and ink stones, while Guofang, the daughter of the Guo family, is a pair of beautiful pearl flowers. Sun's family only realized when they received the item and said, Why did you buy so many things for us, kid? Especially she actually has a big gold bracelet. This is a good thing, even if passed on to younger generations, it will not be discounted. Auntie, you have to accept it. Since I came to take care of the family, uncle and a few brothers and sister. In. Law have been very kind to me. It's hard for you not to accept me, Pei Furua looked at Sun with grievances. Sun couldn't bear to see her like this the most, so she nodded helplessly and said, This time, Auntie, take it. You can't do this again. I know now, Pei Chinrua nodded happily. Gu Lingye's second sister. In. Law was originally somewhat dissatisfied with Pei Gurua's living at home, but she couldn't resist her mother. In. Law and sister. In. Law liking Pei Gurua. Now that Pei Gurua has bought things for everyone, she can't say anything more. If you don't buy so many things in the future, it will cost a lot of money, right? These silver ornaments are estimated to cost several tens of tails of silver. And the mother's big gold bracelet costs more money. The fabrics provided by each household are also good, and they all cost several tens of tails of silver. Moreover, there are things related to children. This won't cost much either. If Pei Jian didn't say how much money he had spent, he didn't want them to know. Guo glanced at Pei Furua with a displeased expression and said, I have also bought these things before. Pei Genrua looked at Guo Xiu innocently, making Guo Xiu feel embarrassed to say more. The Gu family was very happy to receive the gift from Pei Kuruo. Song followed Gu Lin back into the room and whispered, How much money does Pei Lin Rua have in his hands? That's all he has to buy. This fabric is top dot notch, only the fifth brother has bought it for his parents, they don't have it. Gu Lin glanced at Song Xiu with dissatisfaction and said, how much money does someone have to do with you? I'm just curious to ask, said Song wrongly. Hello, what's wrong with the money in the Chirin family? I warn you to be honest. Gu Lin glared at Song Shi. Today, Pei Fenroa has already bought so many things for their family, and this person actually cares about their money. Is this something that humans can do? I. Song looked at Gu Lin with some dissatisfaction, and she said, as for. But she can actually send these things back to her mother's house. Gu Lin knew what she wanted to see as soon as he saw her like this. It's up to you to handle the things I gave you, but do you dare to touch and try the things that belong to me and the child? Song felt a little guilty and said, I am just. Do you think I don't know about you secretly taking money and meat from your mother's family? Gu Lin was already dissatisfied with the Song family. Since having a son, she has started to act recklessly. Do you think you're standing firm at home? That's my parents. What's wrong with me being filial to them? Song was also a bit angry, thinking that he was just unfilial. I didn't say you can't be filial to them. It's up to you how you want to be filial with your own things, but if you want to use things from me and my two sons to be filial to your mother's family, you should get back to her family and don't come back. I can do what I say. This was his warning to the Song family. If you don't listen to him, it's not impossible to do so. 
Song looked at Gu Lin with a pale face and said, You. You. Gu Lin was too lazy to pay attention to him. He glanced at the things on the table and took away the clothes and fabrics of himself and his two children, as well as the food bought by Pei Shirua and his children, as well as pens, ink, paper, and ink stones. Watching so many things taken away, Song stopped and said, What are you doing? I won't take anything to my mother, let her keep it. Since Song wants to subsidize her family, he can only do so. Song glared angrily at Gu Lin. In this way, wouldn't my mother dot in dot law know about her subsidy to her mother's family? Are you still not human? I am your wife, so why are you haggling with me? Gu Lin glanced at Song Shi and left holding something, too lazy to say more to her. What are you doing? Sun frowned as he watched Gu Lin come over holding a bunch of things, Mother, I'll keep the things with my two children, she said and called her own two children. If my aunt buys dim sum and my father puts them in grandma's place, you can find grandma to give them to you when you want to eat them. The two children looked at Gu Lin in surprise, can dad give me and my brother dim sum? Upon hearing these words, Sun's face darkened and he said, what's going on, Chinner? Grandma's father and uncle's mother will take away all the dim sum they bought for us, Gu Chin said wrongly. Gu and holds Sun's leg and looks up at her. Grandma Anan wants to eat dim sum. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Song Clan Caught Up You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Song Clan Caught Up, Grandma will give you food, said Sun, suppressing her anger in her heart. Fonger, take your younger brother and them to play in the back, Sun said with a smile as she looked at Gu Fong. Gu Fong knew that Aunt Air was going to have bad luck, so she quickly took several younger brothers away. When all the children left, Sun asked Gu Lin to pull Song out. Song was brought out by Gu Lin and was about to lose his temper when he saw Sun's ugly face and said, Mom. What's wrong with Mom? Sun didn't speak, but asked Gu Lin to call everyone except for Pei Lin Ruo. Soon everyone in the family arrived, including Gu Lin Ye. What happened to my mother? He hasn't been as angry as his mother since he returned. Gu Miao whispered to his wife beside him, Madam, do you know what happened? Lin shook her head gently and said, I don't know either. I just put something that Sister Roa gave us in the room. Gu Shan also looked at his wife, who shook her head gently. She didn't know what was wrong with his mother. After everyone had arrived, Sun looked at her daughter dot in dot law and said, Your father and I don't treat you unfairly on weekdays, do we? During the Chinese New Year and holidays, we also asked your husband to buy gifts for you to bring back. Isn't this a lot? Qian looked at Sun with confusion and said, Mom, what happened? Every time during the Chinese New Year, you ask me and a few sister dot in dot law to bring back a lot of things. Yes, mother. Gua nodded in agreement. Who doesn't say that Sun is a good mother? In law. Although she has a hot personality, she is a reasonable person. Don't treat your daughter. In law unfairly, treat them like grandchildren, and they don't have to hand over money to the public. Whose daughter? In law has such good days. Did someone say it's difficult to listen to, mom? Lin also frowned and asked. Her mother said that having such a good mother. In. Law was falling into a nest of blessings. Sun nodded in satisfaction as she listened to the words of her three daughter. In. Law. Then, with a sharp gaze, he turned to Song and said, Since you married into my Gu family, have we treated you unfairly? No, no, said Song with a thud in her heart, since there is no such thing, why did you take away the dim sum bought for the children by the second child and the fifth child to your parents? If you give the things to the child and the second child today, and the second child doesn't bring them for me to keep, do you want to take them all back? Sun scolded angrily. Gu Dajiang listened for a while before understanding what was going on. He approves of his daughter. In. Law bringing something back to his mother's house, after all, he and his daughter. In. Law also bring things back to their father. In. Law's house. But she didn't have to cheat on the child's belongings. 
Gua and the others looked at Song in surprise, how could such a thing happen? No wonder my mother is so angry. Qian rolled his eyes at Song, this fool. How good is Gu's family? What kind of goods is the Song family? Surprisingly, Song brought all the children's belongings home with him. It's really foolish. Mom, I just thought, my mother's family is not doing well, I think. They're not doing well, should I give you all the money at home so that you can help your mother's family? Sun interrupted Song's words and angrily scolded. Song kept shaking her head and said, Mom, I just took some small things and didn't think about. Little thing. What did you say about the thing that was stolen from the child's husband's mouth? Sun was very angry, thinking that if Pei Jian should have given Song a silver jewelry, he felt that this bastard was somewhat ignorant. Second, go and bring the silver jewelry that Roa Roa gave me. I'll keep the money you earn in the future, and come find me when you need it. Sun snorted coldly as she glanced at Song. Despite the opposition of the Song family, Gu Lin returned and handed the two new silver ornaments to the Sun family, saying, Mom, please help me keep the money I earn from now on. His money is used to raise children and show filial piety to his parents, and the Song family also deserves it. It's not that he wants to target the Song family, but that they are really going too far. Song looked at Gu Lin with a pale face and said, Gu Lin, are you satisfied now? Are you happy to see me embarrass you like this? If you don't want to stay at the Gu family, just leave, Gu Lin snorted coldly. If it weren't for the calculation of the Song family, how could he have married the Song family? I originally thought that since I got married, I should live a good life. Who would have thought that after my two sons were born, she would start continuously subsidizing her parents. At first, it was just some small things, and gradually even the things given to the children had to be snatched. You. You've been deceiving people too much. After Song finished speaking, she ran out. Sun snorted coldly, don't go pick her up. Let her go. I want to see how well the people of the Song family can treat her while she is protecting the Song family. Mom, I know. Take songs. He doesn't have this leisure. Sun looked at the other three daughter dot in dot law and said, I don't object to you bringing something to your mother's house when you go back, but you can't bring back the things Xiao Wu bought for your child. Don't worry, mother. We all know. They would go back to their mother's house to buy some pastries and a few pounds of meat at most. How could I possibly take back the things my uncle bought for the child? You should know that what uncle bought is also a good thing. They have their own small home, so of course, they take care of themselves first. Sun looked at her daughter dot in dot law with a lot of peace of mind. Except for Song who did not personally find a daughter dot in dot law for her son, everyone else had inquired about it themselves. Thinking of Song's plan to marry his second son to the death, Sun's mood was very bad. She reached out and rubbed her eyebrows. Now that things have happened, she can only admit it. Gu Lingye frowned and comforted Sun, saying, Mother, don't worry about second brother. If Song continues to behave like this without knowing what's going on, we may not be able to take action. His things are not so easy to hold. Sun felt much better when comforted by his younger son and said, You're right. If Pei Zirua knew what Song had done, he rolled his eyes and realized that Song was really at a loss. The people in the Gu family are very easy to get along with. She didn't want to catch Gu Lin and live a good life, but even thought of giving everything in the family to her parents. Gu Fang sat across from Pei Xianrua in confusion and said, Auntie Rua, do you think my second aunt is sick here? After speaking, he extended his finger and pointed to his own head, as if the other person was ill and unsure. Pei Juru couldn't help but feel a bit amused. Why do you think so? The people in the village all say that my grandmother is a very good mother. In law, even my grandmother and others say the same. They even told my mother not to take things home and to live a good life with my father, but she actually took my brother's things back to her parents' house. Gu Fang couldn't understand this. 
the younger brother of Aunt Eyre's family is lazy and lazy. He doesn't do anything at home and spends money recklessly. The whole family relies on his parents farming to earn money. If she had such a younger brother, she would definitely beat him up. Fortunately, my younger brother is very well behaved and not such a person. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Teaching Embroidery. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Teaching Embroidery He reached out and rubbed Gu Fang's little head, saying, Sisters and brothers used to help each other, but we can't blindly help each other. Gu Fang looked at Pei Kurua in confusion and didn't understand her meaning. The meaning is that you are first and foremost yourself, and you need to live your own life well. When your younger brother really needs your help, you can go and help. You can't be like your second aunt, she is wrong in doing so. Pei Gurua chose another method to explain to Gu Fang. Gu Fang nodded clearly and said, I understand. My mother also told her, but she didn't understand at the time. Now that I see auntie like this, she understands. You're so good. Pei Jinrua was making clothes with fabric while talking to Gu Fang. Gu Fang looked at the beautiful flowers embroidered by Pei Gongrua with envy in her eyes. Observing Gu Fang's gaze, Pei Gongrua smiled and asked, Do you want to learn? After hesitating for a moment, Gu Fang nodded lightly and said, Yes, my mother said that having an extra skill in the girl's family can lead to a better life in the future. Pei Zirua looked at Gu Fang as if she had been struck by lightning. This girl is only seven years old, so Guashir told her this. You want to learn from me and teach you. Pei Linrua went into the room and took some unused cloth, then started teaching Guo Fang some needlework with needle and thread. It will be much easier to start embroidery after learning it. Let's learn the flat needle first, Pei Linrua demonstrated to Gu Fang on the cloth head. Gu Fang studies very seriously. You come and give it a try. Gu Fang took the cloth and needle from Pei Zirua's hand and began to try. Pei Zirua looked at her with a smile and gave her a few pointers, and then saw that she was doing well before doing her own thing. Sun came over and saw Gu Fang sitting next to Pei Furua, holding a needle and thread in his hand. Fanger, what are you doing? Grandma, if my aunt teaches me how to embroider flowers, look. Gu Fang handed Sun Shir the needle technique she had practiced. If it's really too much trouble for you, said Sun, feeling pleased to see her granddaughters learning with ease, it's okay, I've been fine lately. If Fang Er wants to learn, I'll teach her. Gu Fang has a very good attitude towards learning and is a student that Pei Shirua likes. Sun nodded with a smile and then said to Gu Fang, Fang Er, if your aunt is willing to teach you, you should learn along well, you know. I know the milk now. You can continue to learn, if you want to be careful with your arms, don't get too tired, Sun warned anxiously before leaving. Auntie, I know. Sun left happily and saw that Guo had told her about Pei Horuo teaching Gu Fang embroidery. Guo looked at Sun in surprise and said, Mom, is this really true? Of course, I think Fang Er has learned quite well from Ruo Ruo. Ruo Ruo is a young lady from a wealthy family, and she definitely knows a lot of things. If Fang Er can learn a little from Ruo Ruo, it's also her fate. Sun thought very simply, learning these things is a child's ability. If you learn well, you can earn money by embroidering anything in the future. Gua nodded happily and said, I'll go thank Ruo Ruo. Where are you going? In the future, if you treat Ruo better, that's all. I know now, mother. Guo Shi originally liked Pei Kurua, but now she likes it even more. Lin and Qian are not jealous when they know this news. Why should they be jealous if they don't have a daughter? But they can go ask Pei Lin Rua about making clothes. Just think of it and do it. The two of them came over with needle, thread, and fabric to find Pei Jin Rua. If we hear your sister dot in dot law say you're teaching Fang or embroidery, we'll have the audacity to come and learn from you, Lin said shyly. For these two sister dot in dot law, Pei Jirua still has a good impression. They are both the kind of people who are easy to get along with. 
No problem. The two of them brought chairs to ask Pei Gurua for advice. After Pei Gurua taught them, they suddenly felt a sense of enlightenment. Sun knew that his two daughter dot in dot law was both angry and funny when they went to find Pei Furua, but they didn't miss a chance. But that's also good, you can learn more things. As long as you don't mind. On the other hand, Li Shi couldn't wait for Li Matsi to return after cooking, and he couldn't find anyone to go to the places he often stayed in. Li Matsi has been arrested and taken to the prison, someone suddenly said to Li as she was preparing to go back. Li followed the sound and looked over, but did not see the person who told her about it. Isn't this true? Li murmured. Li, who was preparing to go home, became increasingly anxious about this matter and could only go to the county government to take a look. What are you doing? Just as I arrived at the entrance of the county government office, I was stopped by someone. I, I heard my son was arrested, so I came to ask, Li said shyly. What is your son's name? Li Matsi. It's him. He was taken to the government office for blocking the way and robbing, and threatened the victim in front of the adults. He was beaten by the adults for thirty days and will be locked up for six months, said the Yaman guard with a cold face. Upon hearing these words, Li almost fainted on the ground and said, Is there any misunderstanding? What kind of misunderstanding could there be? It's shameless of you to try to force someone while the girl is unconscious, said the Yaman official with a disdainful expression. Even if you like someone else's girl, you should ask them if they are willing. There is no reason for a tyrant to force himself. Upon hearing this, where else does Li still have any unclear reasoning? All of this is the fault of that slut, Pei Jinruo. The adult is not like this, she agreed to it herself. Do you agree? A beautiful girl from her parents, what do you like about your son? This woman is really shameless and dares to say anything outside. Li looked at the person in front of her with a pale face and asked with some embarrassment, Sir, can I see my son? No, hurry up and leave, otherwise we'll catch you too. Li was afraid that what the Yaman officials were saying was true, so she had to leave first. Leaving the government office, Li met Fongling village with a gloomy face. Upon returning to the village, Li quickly went to find Li Shan and his son. As soon as I entered, I saw them eating and the food was quite good. If it were on weekdays, Li would definitely eat together. Now, whenever she thinks of her precious son suffering in the government office, they will be very angry here. With a gloomy face, he walked over and flipped the table, pointing at Li Shan and scolding him, your younger brother is suffering in the prison of the government office. How could you eat and drink here so much? The old man Li's face suddenly darkened as he looked at the scattered food on the ground. Today is the meat he asked his daughter dot in dot law to buy. Now they all fell to the ground without taking a few bites. Li Lao too stood up and slapped Li Shi in the face, saying, divide the family and take care of yourself. How does he have anything to do with the boss? The old man Li had no reaction to the fact that Li Matsi was imprisoned in the government office. Mainly because this son disappointed him. A child spoiled by the Li family is now locked up in prison, and he is not surprised at all. Didn't he stay at home properly? What did he do to get locked up in the government office? Li Shan asked expressionlessly as he looked at Li Shi. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Disguising People You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Disguising People More Than Once, I am grateful that my father insisted on dividing the family, and it was my father who followed him, not Li who followed him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have thought about this day. He is your younger brother. What's wrong with my younger brother? He asked us when he was doing things. If it weren't for the long separation, their family's reputation would have been ruined by Li Matsi. Li didn't listen to these at all. I don't care. If you don't save my son today, I'll make it difficult for you both. Her sons are all like this, why are they still here eating and drinking well? Mr. Li looked coldly at the Li family and said, whatever you want. 
Li looked at the old man in shock and said, You. You don't care about your own son. When we split up, you wanted everything, and the boss didn't get anything. At that time, we made it clear that even if he died, he wouldn't come to us. You promised it yourself. At that time, he was worried that Li Shi and Li Matsi would be implicated, so he made everything clear. Li's face changed and he said, I don't care. If my son has an accident, you must help. If he has an accident, he will take care of those two bastards, Pei Furua and Gu Lingye. Upon hearing this, Mr. Li smiled meaningfully and said, Boss, come with me. Li's eyes were filled with joy, and he knew it was like this. Li Shan followed the old man Li out of the door and only whispered, Dad, what did you think? Why did you agree to her? You will know then. Li Shan, with doubts, followed old Li to the Gu family, where they were having dinner. Without Song causing trouble there, their lives are quite comfortable. Even Gu Lin's two sons didn't ask where Song went. They only knew that the Song family was not at home. If Aunt Roa and Uncle Roa bought them dim sum, they could keep them by themselves. Where's Brother Gu eating? Upon hearing Mr. Li's voice, Sun's face immediately drooped, and she turned to look at Gu Dajiang in class with a warning in her eyes. Gu Dajiang looked at his wife calmly and didn't let her say much. Brother Li, why did you come to find me when you're not eating at home at this time? That unfilial son caused some trouble to your family's fifth child today, I'll compensate them for it. Gu Dajiang smiled and said, You can tell Xiao Wu and Ruo Ruo about this matter. But if a girl is stopped by them, it's okay, and there's still a big cut on her arm. What should we say about this? Gu Dajiang asked with a smile. Mr. Li's expression was a bit stiff, and he looked at Pei Lin Rua sitting next to Sun in surprise, is there anything else? Gu Dajiang spoke helplessly, if it weren't for pushing my little five away, it might have hit my little five's heart. Mr. Li knew immediately what Gu Dajiang meant, and this matter was not over. I really don't know about this, brother. If he knew that Li Matsi had done these things, why did he bother himself? Upon hearing this, Li suddenly became angry and said, You're talking nonsense. My son is so obedient, how could he possibly do such a thing? Are you saying that the county magistrate has wronged him? Gu Dajiang looked at Li Shi and asked. As soon as Li was about to say something, the old man Li angrily scolded, Shut up. Is the county magistrate also something she can arrange freely? Li looked at old Li hesitantly, afraid to provoke him at this moment. Brother Li, how do you think we can solve this matter? Gu Dajiang asked helplessly. I had thought that since Li Matsi had already been punished, I wouldn't pursue this matter, but now it doesn't seem like it is, said Li with a gentle attitude and a calm tone, which was so heart-wrenching. This. Old Li felt a bit lost. Li felt a little angry when she saw the old man Li like this. What are you doing? You can't even protect your own son. What face do you have? Li Shan glared angrily at Li Shi and said, If it weren't for you getting used to him, it wouldn't have turned out like this. How dare you say, my dad, dot. Shut up, that's your own younger brother. It's okay if you can't help, you're still saying such shameless things. Reaching out to point at herself, Li Shan felt incredulous. In her heart, what was wrong with her actions? I don't care, today you must give me an explanation. This slut has seduced my son and is still slandering him. This matter is not over. Li Shi glared angrily at Pei Lin Rua, feeling extremely resentful. Sun looked at Li with a gloomy expression and said, Are you still seducing your son? People like Li Matsi have to shake their heads when they see them. Gu Dajiang looked at Sun helplessly, didn't he agree to hand it over to him for handling? We know what happened before, but now there are so many witnesses. Li Matsi did indeed intercept my son and his team with people and weapons on the way. The county magistrate has already investigated this matter very clearly. If you have any opinions, you can go to the county magistrate. Gu Dajiang said expressionlessly. 
Upon hearing these words, Old Lee spoke helplessly, Brother Gu, take a look at this matter. This matter was decided by the county magistrate, and we can't help either, Gu Dajiang interrupted Li's words and said helplessly. Li's younger brother's children still need to be taken care of. Old man Li felt his complexion dull. Li Matsi's reputation in Fongling village is well known and he doesn't care. Now that Gu Dajiang says that the child still needs to be taken care of, he feels that Gu Dajiang did it intentionally. Since that's the case, let's leave first. Boss, let's go back, said Li, looking at Li Shan. Upon hearing this, Li became unhappy and said, No, you can't leave. You must help me save my son. You have the ability to go. He was already embarrassed enough in front of Gu Dajiang, and the old lady was still making trouble here. Do you want them to be ashamed in order to be happy? Li watched helplessly as the old man Li and his companions left, feeling extremely angry in her heart. You wait with me. Li Shi looked at Pei Junruo with resentment and quickly left. Returning to Li Shan's home, Li Shi looked at him and said naturally, Give me your money, I'm going to rescue your brother. Upon hearing this, Li Shan widened his eyes and looked at Li Shi. What are you saying? Give me the money, Li Shi urged, too lazy to talk nonsense to him. Gu Lingya and the others don't care, as long as they give enough money, their son will definitely come back. Just as Li Shan was about to speak, the old man Li kicked the person out and looked at Li Shi standing at the door, angrily saying, Get out. It's all up to you today to bring trouble to my son. Don't think of harming him, old Li warned as he looked at the Li family. Li almost fell to the ground and said, That's also your son. I don't have such a son, said old Li with a cold face. What else has Li Matsi done besides shouting at him? Even if it's not as good as my eldest son, I still like to cause trouble. Do you still want your son to take care of you in the future? Old Li sneered, I can't even hope for it now, can I still hope for it in the future? End of this chapter